everybody, XP Games and Elk here and welcome to a new series on this channel. Welcome to a new series on FE Insight. Today we're taking a look at... I have honestly not prepared well enough for this. Um, I was just too excited to record that I forgot to come up with a name for the series. Um, yeah, um... What is, like, the name of this series? I don't know. I'll figure it out along the way when I upload it. Anyway, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is the first episode of this... Maybe I'll just call it ROM Hacking Pair Up. Um, or ROM Hacking Seminar, something along those lines. Um, in this new series, we will take a look at uh, hacks made by particular... People who submitted their hacks. Uh, I might also take a look at examples that are popular within the ROM hacking community. We'll be taking a look at some hacks and we'll nail down what exactly is good about the hacks and what could improve. Um, you're also allowed to submit your own hacks. Make sure to do that in the description. There will be a mail address where you can send uh, your patch to and I'll try and see if I can play your hack because damn I really want to give something back to the community like this um, so yeah today we're playing Fire Emblem 5D's a hack made by a super talented individual going by the name of Eckhart who has done an incredible job of sort of creating their hack and getting people to like get excited about it that's not entirely what I wanted to say but I wanted to get at was that Eckhart has done a wonderful job at like studying ROM hacking in general, putting the practice and tips I gave on the FE Builder videos into practice, and he or they uh, have created an extremely nice hack that we're going to play today. I'm so excited! I couldn't help but like giggle when uh, the recording was still off. I was just so excited to get started because, um, personally to me, this um, is also a little bit about growth. Um, to see that some people, uh, and especially Eckhart and people who were there from the start, are able to create something cool like this with stuff that I taught them is absolutely amazing. Either way, um, today we're going to take a look at how to do your introduction chapter, because Fire Emblem 5Ds has done an absolutely great job at making a good introduction chapter. Uh, I left the story out for this one because this particular chapter will be gameplay focused uh, mostly and I wanted to focus specifically on enemy placement and I wanted to focus on how you create a map for a first time player that is enjoyable to play on um, I'll just start nailing down some details along the first uh, as we play is what I meant to say as you can see, we have a bunch of units on the field. Um, we have our typical Jagan-like character. We have Saiga here. Look at these incredible stats. From what I remember, Eckhart may have nerfed Saiga. Uh, it's not visible here. Regardless, he will be like the Seth of our playthrough. Makes sense because he's um, a veteran soldier right here. Former Ranger Captain. He will save us from trouble. Oh, then we have Taka here, who's the standard Armor Knight. Uh, we have Nerf, who is the more offensive damage-dealing Cavalier. Then we have Blitz, who is the faster Cavalier. It's like a Christmas Cav thing going on here. Um, Blitz is the one focused on lances, and Nerf is the one focused on swords. And as you can see, both Cavs only have one weapon. This plays nicely into the story that the uh, team from the satellite, or our heroes, they don't have much to work with, so this is a very resource-efficient hack as well, which allows for some pretty cool things you wouldn't normally be able to do, because, for an example, Saiga, even though he's a bow knight, or a ranger, Saiga has no bow, which makes every single unit that you get a lot more niche, especially in the first couple of early chapters. Uh, then we have the main character, Yusei, I'm just so happy to see the portraits are in, they look so great. Shout out to Eckhart's friend who like made these gorgeous portraits, they look fantastic. This is so amazing. Did I forget anyone? Uh, I don't think so. 
So what I wanted to take a look at first, and we'll grab FE Builder to take a look at some stuff in detail. Um, what I wanted to highlight first is that Eckhart made very good use of splitting up units and having favorable matchups. In most Fire Emblem games, you will notice that there are some form of favorable matchups going on. There's a bunch of maps wherever, whenever a new unit joins, it's almost every single one of them, uh, there's a favorable matchup going on. Uh, it's, for, it's when Nino joins in Fire Emblem 7, it's when, um, like for example, Heath joins in Fire Emblem 7. It is, no, let me think a little more, who else do we have, um, well, I forgot her name. Raina in Fire Emblem Birthright, where she is a uh, Kinshi Knight with bows against uh, a lot of flyers on the map. There's just a lot of favorable matchups going on. And if you're creating a Fire Emblem hack, favorable matchups for your first chapters are oh so important. Because these will most likely be the units we'll be sticking around with for the longest time. Like, for an example, you say he's the main character. So, favorable matchups are important. Now, the favorable matchups we see here is uh, we have two soldiers here, each wielding an iron lance. Um, and then we have a Myrmidon here, who is a sword unit. And Taka and Blitz are two characters that wield lances as well. So, there's no weapon triangle disadvantage. Uh, there's no weapon triangle advantage, at least not against the soldiers, uh, which makes the matchup against these two units extremely favorable. Now, on the other side, we have a Cav, um, and Yusei just so happens to have a Rapier, which is very nice for that Cav specifically, but there's also two fighters here. Now, notice that we also have the Sword Cav Nerve right here at the fighter side of things. So we have a split up and a favorable matchup for both units and it's very important to have those uh, especially in the first early chapters and when new units join because it's best to have a unit join while stomping units that they're very good against than having a unit join and getting absolutely destroyed by enemies on the map because if you do the latter, that discourages the player from using this new unit that got their asses kicked. And if you instead have the unit kick the asses of the enemy, what re that results in the player thinking that that unit is very, very strong. Which I hope they are if you balance things out. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. As you can see, the cav is over here. Um, what we will do is you say doubles, which is good. Um, I'll try to see... Let me put the game to fast. Let me try to demonstrate um, the way Eckhart has laid out this chapter. Like, this enemy right here, this Cav, will try to make them attack Yusei, uh, Yusei because Yusei cannot attack the Cav, so we'll lure him over. I think this might be the best way to go about it, because Yusei doubles this soldier this fighter, which is very handy. That insane amount of base speed is also amazing. I love that. Um, so yeah, this guy deals 14 damage, Yusei has. Four defense, so that's 10 damage. And this Cav deals 11, 11 minus four is, we should be fine, that's seven damage. Yusei lives on just a single hit point, if he gets hit by all attacks. Now also notice that this is also very nice. I don't know if it's intentional, I like to think so. Because Eckhart put this fighter right here. Um, if you put Nerf like down here, this fighter will start attacking Nerf because he's closer. Uh, he's, you put him in his range. While the soldiers over here will start moving up if you put, like, say, Taka here. Which I do not know if it's, if it's a good strategy. Well, the Myrmidon deals no damage whatsoever. Blitz doubles, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, what's the damage? Well, these guys... They deal 7 damage, so Blitz should be fine. 
I'd say we take a coordinated attack and try to take down this Myrmidon right here. Because that way we're able to take down the soldiers next turn or seemingly next turn as well. I might be over rushing things actually, but I'm pretty sure we'll be, we will be fine. We could always put Blitz and uh, Taka in the forest as well. So with today's strategy, or with the strategy we have now, you can also see that we still have Saiga left who, well, we can just let him chill there. Um, I'd rather get him to a position... If they attack Saiga, then that's their fault. Then they have a Death Witch, clearly. This guy prefers to attack Nerve. Also, um, I really love that there's custom music in the hack. That sets the hack apart as well. Um, you gotta have something custom. Even though a good hack can be achieved with vanilla assets, you need to have something that sort of sets the hack apart. Unless it's a, uh, you know, a Fire Emblem Age reskin or something. Because if you don't, then it will simply not be recognizable in the giant uh, stream of hacks. What, for an example, this game does really well is it has custom portraits and it has custom music, which is kind of the basic and the more common way to set your hack apart because it just works that well. Another way is what I did for Fire Emblem The Prophecy of Flames is simply not only include unique music, but also make sure that the map palettes are a different color. Now that's tricky because getting a good color in is hard, but it is something you might want to consider. And so as you can see, the calf goes for Yusei, look at perfect 20 damage, a perfect kill, which is extremely nice. So. At the moment, uh, you might have noticed that there's a Wyvern Knight boss here, Ushio, and damn, he looks freaking amazing. Look at him. Such a cool portrait. I love these portraits. Look at him. He's an Axe Wyvern, um, which, to be fair, the Lance map icon might be a little bit like, hey, this guy is uh, actually a normal Wyvern Knight with a Lance. It's fine, uh, people need to check inventories anyway. It's not really necessarily a nitpick, but this guy is an Axe Wyvern Knight and I wouldn't have expected anything different. Axe Wyvern is pretty scary in Chapter 1, but the stats balance it out. Now, one thing I want to show or even want to look at is, last time I checked, um, where's my mouse? Last time I checked, this guy, who's, n oh, who's over here? Last time I checked, he did not actually have, um, last time I checked, he did not actually have a, um, he, he moved is what I'm trying to say, which is interesting because I'm kind of want to see if that's still the case. Um, that's perfect. I, I prepared well, guys, I swear. Last time I checked, he just didn't move or he moved. Um... So, let me quickly check if that's still the case. So yeah, he does move. Uh, he does move, or do not move. Well, that's he moves if you get into his range. Uh, he will retreat. Um, so he, when this is set to don't retreat, he will actually stay in place. Um, interestingly enough, this is something that I'm completely okay with. You might be like, XP. This is a Wyvern Knight. If you don't expect... You're like, this is an enemy boss. He suddenly moves. You didn't expect that. First of all, foolish of you to consider that all bosses are standing still. Secondly, uh, what's interesting is that this guy is a Wyvern Knight. And you make a boss a Wyvern Knight or an enemy a Wyvern Knight for a reason, right? If they are supposed to move... Uh, without being hampered by terrain, that's when you make a boss a Wyvern Knight. So it's kind of foolish if you fall for this trick. I can see why people could fall for this trick. Uh, it's just something I noticed that maybe that may cause some people to be like, Oh my god, what the hell? He moves. But regardless, that's just 
a skill issue. It's just something that I noticed which could be a thing, but I don't feel like it's too messy or too, like, punishing. And after all, this is the first chapter, you could always restart. Uh, a way to make sure that everyone, including people who are not paying attention as much or not uh, seeing the trick, to make them aware that the boss moves is by like saying, giving them a voice line saying like, oh, if they come too close, I'm going in. If that's actually already in the hack, then um, I forgot, but otherwise that could be a solution. But I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I still like to bring it up because it could be that some people fall for that. Let's see. Oh, this is this is also amazing. The writing in this hack is phenomenal. Fighting the Imperials, aren't you? you know what happens when you defeat def def fight the Empire, don't you? So, as a loyal citizen, I can possibly not possibly condone what you're doing. So just leave. Oh, and if that vulnerary on the shelf somehow ended up in your pocket, I've got nothing to do with it. All right, got it. The vulnerary on that shelf. The vulnerary to heal yourself if you get hurt. I just love that. It's amazing. Also notice how the map, from a visual perspective, also looks quite appealing. Blitz, you're not doing that well. Um, if this misses... Nah, I'm not going to do... Should I do it? Should I not do it? Oh, decisions. What's life without a little bit of a risk? It paid off. It's also funny because one of the characters in this game is also named Risk. Ooh, that's a good level up. But Blitz didn't get any speed. Why did you not get any speed? I thought you were the speed cab. Ah, well. So now we have a little bit of a breathing space. Um, also a good thing to do is if you make a chapter where a lot of enemies and a lot of player characters are present at a spot, Make sure to give the player some breathing room every now and then. These enemies were very aggressive and they pushed towards me. If this chapter was bigger, I'd add some pushing reinforcements that would start moving, which, spoiler alert, this hack also does. You'll see that in a minute. Um, but it's good to know that good advice to just keep the pace of the chapter well or keep the chapter well paced, like what's happening now. Um, now we get a little bit of a breathing room. There's no enemies tra charging towards us. We can chill for a little bit and start making our way to the bottom, which is always a good thing. And this guy decided that Saiga was a juicy target and actually signed himself a contract with death. Good job. Uh-oh! Hehe, <laughs> looks like the Imperials are busy focusing on those Watchmen schmucks. This is our chance, boys. Time for some good old raiding. And as you can see, there is reinforcements which start pushing. So, what I mentioned from the visual standpoint, what I really like about this map as well is that there's actually ransacked villages where the brigands spawn to show you that these guys have done this before. It's a really little touch. It's like a very abstract and very obscure and passive bit of storytelling, but it, uh, it just makes the map so much more interesting and fun overall, so much more memorable. Let's see. This guy deals 11 damage, and you have, you say, has four defense, so that is again seven damage. Which is fine. Yusei can take that. I am a little bit afraid. Ah, luckily the walls are in the way, blocking Ushiro from moving too close. So I guess we'll just stand in the range here. Uh, Yusei will be fine. Uh, we'll move Nerve over to the Brigand. Have him tackle the Brigand. The Cav cannot reach Saiga if he does this little juke. This is also one of my favorite villages in the game. Oh, Yusei has finally stood up to the Imperial Forces, has he? 
I always knew this day would come, ever since he first came to this town. How did I know? <laughs> it's because I'm clairvoyant. Speaking of, you should take this. It might not be useful right now, but it will be soon. How do I know? I already told you, I'm clairvoyant. I just love this conversation so much. It's, uh, it's just so great. I might actually put Taka in range as well. It doesn't really matter who the Cav attacks because he has a sword. Because again, good that they didn't give this Cav a lance because we have Yusei. Okay, so because because this Cav does not wield a lance or lance, we actually have the opportunity to bait out the Cav with every single unit on the map. Because Yusei has a rapier, and he uses swords. Nerve has swords. Taka has a lance, so he has weapon triangle advantage. Same for Blitz, and Saiga is just Saiga. He also has a sword, but it's Saiga. He will kick butts. Moving you over here. Healing you up, because... Tricky. And that makes the boss all the more scarier, without giving him very high stats. Since the boss is wielding an axe, that makes him just that little extra scarier. Because that means that not every single unit can come and help us. Okay, he still prefers to go for Yusei. Another very clean kill, 20 damage, perfect. This has been balanced so nicely. The first chapter of the Prophecy of Flames is balanced in the sense that I too may use a favorable matchups where Sir Land can go around and go over the bridges to the left side to take down the soldiers and Tim can go in the middle and take down the fighters um, and the matchup is like Tim two shots the fighters so that's good the thing is with this particular hack though is that Sir Land is just so overpowered that he overkills I feel like Fire Emblem 5D's first chapter has a lot more well thought out encounters where Yusei just perfectly one shots the calves on normal mode. That's just perfect in the way that it's been designed so well. I like that a lot. Is what I'm trying to get at. So the boss deals 16 damage. I should probably not be over estimating the chapter. I could do an LTC by just throwing Saiga in. But that just would feel weird to do because not a lot of people do that because they actually want to like give the boss XP to someone who can use it. Good level up for nerve, holy damn, bro. Why didn't you level up this way when I played through the game, through the hack for the first time? That's wacky. So let's use that vulnerary, or one of the vulneraries. I'm clairvoyant, those vulneraries, I'm clairvoyant as well, those vulneraries will come in handy at some point during play the playthrough, just saying. If only it's for cash, because guess what? We have a grand total of zero gold. Yep, told ya. So, we could put nerve in range here. Let's see. That's an okay matchup. I'll take this guy down with Saiga though. Oh wow, he actually tanks one hit. Good job, Brigand. He's stronger than most other enemies on the map. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having some classic Fire Emblem 8 background music for the victory. Let's see. Nerve, prove your worth. You made it this far, well I'll be damned. Still, even the feistiest rat is no match for a lion. Yeah, but who is the rat and who is the lion? Like, look at the manes on Nerve's head, bro. Look at that. He is the Lion King. I'd love to give the uh, kill to Yusei. But that will require some setup. If this hits, we should be fine. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. Oh, Taka with a 90 dodge. That's great. Oh, perfect kill setup. I didn't even have to put Taka in. Wait! Saiga? Why did you not get any experience out of that? That is strange. Get him out of there just for a fail save. Ah, well, no fail save needed. There you go. What? Th this wasn't supposed to happen. Well, let's fire him, bro. And we're playing as the protagonist. Look at how cool he looks. Let's go, more speed! We're doubling this shit. You're... How could, how could I be defeated by a mere satellite scum? Well, that's because I was the tactician. My goodness. There go my hope for a peaceful visit. Well... Yeah. Basically, yeah. I'm gonna go back to the um, screen, to the screen of the uh, FE Builder. Because... What have we learned today? What have we seen? Uh, let me get the unit placer back up here. Let's go. Uh, what we have we learned today is that a couple of key lessons. First of all, make sure that you have favorable matchups for your units. I could skill this even a little further. Make sure that you have favorable matchup for your units. Like have uh, like what Eckhart did in this first chapter. Divide your units and their abilities. Make sure that. Uh, whenever you include a unit in your prologue, they do not stick behind, or they do not suck in the prologue. Make sure that that's a thing you do. Uh, make Also make sure to just have a good flow in the chapter, have a good balance between enemies charging towards you and enemies lingering a little bit in the back. And just in general, make sure that you're having fun whilst playing the chapter. By including fun little story bits, which the houses did pretty well. Um, I won't say too much about the story, because this one was more gameplay focused, of course. But the story at the beginning of the chapter was also really good. I also like that a lot. It sets the tone perfectly. And it even included some little tidbits for people who've never played a lot of Fire Emblem a lot. So, even though you should... Most people would take that for granted when they start a hack. It's always nice to explain some mechanics in the game, uh, even if there's just if there are just vanilla mechanics. Also, make sure to simply include little tips and tricks and stuff like that about new mechanics or new classes you have in the game in your hack. Uh, that sets the hack apart as well as being friendly towards the player. Don't dump new stuff on them and expect them to immediately get it. Which is also nice. Overall, the pacing in this chapter, the tone, uh, the amount of units, it's just really well balanced and it makes for a very fun experience. So, we're in this series, we will be taking a look at chapters that are good. I will also be cr critiquing some others um, along the way, depending on what hacks get submitted to just help you grow. Um, and this is just a video supposed to enlighten you all about um, every single little tidbit that you encounter along the way during hacking. Um, yeah, this is just simple stuff that just works so well if you have a good opening chapter. It's like the first scene of your movie, the first uh, notes to your song, the first, the first chapter of your book. Make sure that whenever you do this, and this goes for everything you make in general, make sure that whenever you create something interesting, that you, when you open your piece, your magnum opus, if you will, make sure that the first thing you do is set a clear tone and make it jump out. Make it memorable, make it fun, make it, like, enticing, make it intriguing. Maybe spark curiosity. There's a lot of tips and tricks on how to do it, and this is uh, a way to do it for Fire Emblem hacks. That should just have a fun and engaging chapter where enemy density is good, where the map design is good, because this map is not only from a gameplay perspective really good, but also from a visual perspective really good. 
make sure to have that make sure to have a good song playing if you don't have original songs then that's okay you can check out the music repository on fe universe for that but make sure to just have a good song have good units have a great introduction to your story have just this have a little bit of the complete picture so that you can give the player or viewer or whatever the consumer i'd like to say because that is more general give them a small piece of what they can expect for sticking around uh, around in the journey because if you start with a bad opener chances are that people will drop off faster than if you have an opener that is so incredibly good and has some mediocre or even bad stuff along the way there is a reason why people play Fire Emblem Echoes through to the end for an example even though the late game gets a little stale in the end that's a complaint I've heard a lot with Fire Emblem Echoes the reason a lot of people still complete the game is because they are just like grasped by the game and they feel like well I'm halfway through because the first part of the game was just this good so the second part should be that good as well and then you get to the Celica route which is just awful <laughs> it has some of those stinky mechanics which I will not go into but place your units well and make sure that you have a good opening chapter is what I'm trying to say and I know mine is definitely not perfect from Final on the Prophecy of Flames I've gotten critique that the opening might just be a little bit too long there might just be a little bit too dialogue uh, the map the very first prologue map is not as well thought out as it should be, uh, in my opinion. There's just, yeah, I have favorable matchups, like in this hack, but Sir Lane just one-shots certain enemies, which is a bit wacky, considering that you might just instead want to have perfect damage numbers, which just feels so much more satisfying. Well, that is something you can debate about, um, whether that opening chapter is worse than this one or the other way around I'm at least curious to hear your opinion on this particular chapter because I know Eckhart put a lot of effort in thanks Eckhart for submitting the hack too by the way for, uh, to this new series Eckhart you're the first person to submit a hack and one of the first people I reviewed the hack from this is actually quite an emotional moment because you were also one of the first people to be this active in the community and I want to thank you for that as well another shout out to um, Eckhart's friends uh, because I also believe someone was responsible for the music shout out to them as well some a shout out to the person um, who was responsible to for the portraits I don't have any links but if I receive them I will put them in the in the description for sure um, and yeah, I don't have anything else to say. This is such a clean opener. If you achieve something like this, you can achieve something like this. This is a really good opener. You can do something like what I did, just have favorable matchups, uh, a interesting story, or at least I hope it was interesting, good music and stuff like that. And as long as you have that, you're basically set. As long as your first chapter is somewhat fun to play, then you're golden. This is a masterpiece of the first chapter, I'd even say. This is such a great first chapter because it just has everything, I feel like. Every single thing has been thought out. Every single thing has been sort of thought about. It's just fantastic. With that all being said, uh, I'm XP Games and L. I went on a really big praise. Is that a rant or like a... I'll t I'm going to call that a complimentary rush where I just give a huge amount of props, kudos, and compliments in a short period of time. I absolutely love this first chapter. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the thumbs up button so that you can like expect more videos like this. If this does really well, uh, I'll of course be motivated to review more of these hacks and teach you more about how to set up your hacks, what I like about seeing, uh, about stuff I like to see in ROM hacks, stuff I like to not see in ROM hacks because there are some really big beginner mistakes. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I will probably see you guys in the next Fire Emblem. Um, How's it called? Fire Emblem uh, pair up or Fire Emblem hacking pair up? Uh, 
Fire Emblem hacking experiences or something like that. Um, ah, well, I'll just call it, probably just call it FE uh, experiences or ROM hacking experiences. Uh, that's probably the name I'll stick with. And on that note, we're ending the video. Ladies and gentlemen, this outro has been going on for too long. I just have so much to say. Uh, thank you all so much for, uh, so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye!